Lafayette has long embraced the story of Hugh Thompson, the Georgia native who arrived unheralded in Acadian in the 1980s to fly helicopters offshore and then work for the state's Department of Veterans Affairs. More than a decade earlier, as a 24-year-old chief warrant officer, Thompson helped stop one of the bloodiest events of the Vietnam War by putting his helicopter between Vietnamese civilians and rampaging U.S. Army troops, who killed more than 500 people in an area known as My Lai. For more than a year, Thompson testified against Army officers accused of taking part in the massacre. Now his biographer, Trent Andrews of Lafayette, believes he's uncovered evidence that the highest levels of the Nixon administration worked to subvert the prosecutions. Well, what we've discovered through extensive investigative reporting and interviews is that President, President Richard Nixon led an effort to sabotage the My Lai trials so that no American would be convicted of a war crime. My Lai generated tremendous public pressure, much of it focused on Lieutenant William Cowley, the only officer convicted in the My Lai prosecutions. He was released after serving three years of house arrest, so the Nixon administration's sabotage efforts may have worked. Uh, the evidence included several things. The handwritten notes of, of Bob Haldeman, who was Nixon's chief of staff, that's one. Uh, the Haldeman diaries, that's two. Uh, we have interviews with one of the prosecutors of the My Lai Court Martial, that's three. Um, there was a letter from the Secretary of the Army at the time, as well as letters from a dozen different congressmen that pointed out that they understood and they saw what was being done by, by the members of the House Armed Services Committee to cooperate with President Nixon in the sabotage of the My Lai trials. White House Chief of Staff Bob Haldeman's notes, discovered by Andrews in the Nixon Library, indicate that a My Lai working group included Henry Kissinger, Pat Buchanan, and Lynn Knopfsinger, among others. The notes talk about dirty tricks and call for help from two senators. Instead, two U.S. House members called witnesses to testify before Congress, then sealed their testimony. That move led to the outright dismissal of charges against one defendant and complicated the prosecutions of the other four defendants. More ominously for Thompson, the notes called for an attempt to discredit one witness. Thompson was grilled in Congress over the charge that he trained his helicopter's guns on U.S. troops. He was called a rat and a traitor by fellow servicemen. But over the course of time, Thompson began to be seen as a hero. Beginning in the mid-1990s, he was awarded the Soldier's Medal, took a trip to Vietnam to meet My Lai survivors in front of the 60 Minutes cameras, and was inducted into the Army Aviation Hall of Fame at Fort Rucker, Alabama. U.S. Senator John Bro nominated Thompson for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2000. By the time he died in 2006 and was buried in Lafayette with military honors, Thompson was widely recognized not just for his battlefield courage, but for his humanity. The Hugh Thompson story was already a very intriguing story of one of the most, one of the purest acts of heroism ever. But I think it's enhanced further when you realize that Thompson was a hero, not on, not only on the battlefield at My Lai, but in the courtroom when he testified on behalf of the, of the army over and over and over again against those who committed war crimes at My Lai. Andrews has revised his Thompson biography, The Forgotten Hero of My Lai, with the findings of his research into the Nixon administration handling of the prosecutions. You can buy the book at AcadianHouse.com. Read more about Thompson and Andrews in an Acadiana People column beginning Saturday night at TheAdvertiser.com and in Sunday's Daily Advertiser.